Hello and welcome to this My Theme Shop video screencast. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fully set up the steady income theme from My Theme Shop. We found from the interactions we've had with our users that the hardest part of blogging isn't finding things to blog about, it's getting people to read them. And if your readers don't take you as a brand or authority, they're much less likely to read your content. Steady Income is the ultimate WordPress theme for online marketers, bloggers, and entrepreneurs. It's packed with features such as a powerful subscription tool, ad optimization, featured product section, and a beautiful responsive design that will boost your online earnings. It's perfect for bloggers who want to build their brand. Before we get started with the tutorial, if you haven't got a good knowledge of WordPress, then you want to head over to mythemeshop.com slash WordPress 101. And here you can brush up on your WordPress skills with our full library of video tutorials about WordPress. You also find some extra WordPress 201 advanced WordPress tutorials here. So if you need to brush up on your skills, then you can do so with our free video tutorials. Once you're ready to get started then, you want to head over to the My Theme Shop member area at mythemeshop.com slash go slash member. Here you want to find the steady income theme, expand that there and press download theme files. You want to save that onto your computer and from there you can head over to your WordPress dashboard. You want to navigate to appearance and then click on themes and from here you can press add new. You want to upload theme and here you can just choose the zip file we've just downloaded. Select that there, press open and then install now. And WordPress is going to upload and then install the theme for you. From there, all you need to do is press activate to activate the theme. From there, you'll be taken to a page where you can install some plugins required to work with the theme. You want to just tick all of these under bulk actions, press install and apply. And WordPress is going to download and install all of those for you. You can then return to you there and all you need to do now is activate them. Just bulk select and press activate and then apply. You'll also see some recommended plugins. This tab includes some plugins that are recommended for the steady income theme but aren't required. Here you'll find plugins such as OTF regenerate thumbnails and you want to use this if you've already got content added to your site. You'll also see the WP Subscribe plugin here and the Pro version as well, WP Subscribe Pro. And this is required to make the homepage subscription box work. So if you're going to use the demo importer here, which we'll come to later, then you'll want to make sure you've got that installed. So we can just press install plugin in order to add that in now. And we can see that's added that in automatically for us. So that plugin is installed now and we can just head back and activate it. And now make sure that the homepage subscription, email subscription box is working. We just press activate and we'll see that's now been activated successfully. So with all those plugins added, we can now head over to appearance and then theme options. This will take us to the mission control center for the theme. And from here we can customize the look and feel of the theme. I'll take you through all of these tabs in turn, but before we get started, if we just head over to the import and export tab, you're going to find the option to import the pre-built options that you'll find on the demo on mythemeshop.com. That includes the theme options, the theme options and widgets, or the theme options, widgets and demo content. I'm gonna import the content as well, so I'll just click this one here and press OK. That's going to import all of that content for me, as well as all the media and all of the post options as well. Once all of that has imported, you'll see that's finished and you can just press OK. You'll then find the theme options reloaded and you'll have all of the content that has been added by default on the demo on mythemeshop.com is added in here. And now we're ready to get started customizing your site. The first tab we have here is general settings and this tab contains common settings which can be applied to the whole theme. First up, you'll see we have the logo image. You'll see here the recommended height is 44 pixels. I'll just remove this one here so I can show you how to add your own. You want to press browse and this will take you to the WordPress media library. You can either select an image you've already uploaded or press upload files in order to add a new logo from your computer. Press select files here. I'll select my logo and press open. WordPress is now going to upload that and we can just press select image in order to add that into our site. And it's the same process for adding a favicon as well as a touch icon that will represent your website on iOS 2 plus and Android 2.1 plus and a metro icon for Internet Explorer 10. 
You can add in your Twitter username in order to add the social features of the theme. So here I'll just add in my theme shop team. You can also add in your feed burner URL. This will allow you to get advanced analytics on those reading your blog via RSS reader. You can sign up for a free account at feedburner.com. So I'll just add in mine here. So you want feeds.feedburner.com slash my theme shop. And that's going to redirect your main RSS feed to your feed burner feed. You can also add in any code you want added to the header before the closing head tag. And that might include things such as Google Webmaster Tools Verification, Bing Webmaster Center, Buy Sell Ad Script, and so on. And it's also the same for footer. You, here you might add in Google Analytics code, Clicky, Stat Counter, Woopro, High Stats, and that kind of thing. Next up, you have the option to enable the AX Quick Search. This will enable or disable the search results appearing instantly below the search form. So if we turn this on here and save those changes, I'll show you what that looks like on our site. So we'll see here we have my site and the search bar on the right hand side. I can now just start typing and as I search for these, we're going to find the search results that fit the phrase I've added into the search bar appear automatically. I also have the option to show all results if I want to see the full results, but this will improve the user experience by allowing users to access the search they're looking for straight from the page that they're already on. So you can have the AX Quick Search turned on or off from the theme options here. You can also choose to enable or disable the responsive design. All my theme shop themes are responsive, including the steady income theme, which means that they adapt to tablet and mobile devices, ensuring that your content is always displayed beautifully, no matter what device visitors are using. If you don't want to have this on, if you just want to display the desktop version of the site on all devices, then you can just press off here. You'll probably want to leave that on though. If you're using right to left language, then you can enable that just here. And if you're using the WooCommerce plugin, you can choose how many products are displayed on the shop page just by customizing this number here. You want to save those changes once you are done. And next up, we can have a look at the dedicated performance tab, which includes performance related options, which can help speed up your website. First is to enable or disable prefetching. This works so if a user is on a home page, then the single page will load faster. And if the user is on a single page, then the home page will load faster in modern browsers. That just loads some of the content. You probably want to have that on in order to speed up your website. You can enable or disable lazy loading. Lazy loading works by delaying the loading of images outside of the viewport. So that's outside of the area you can actually see on the screen until the user scrolls to them. And you can customize this further. So you might want to uh, turn off lazy loading for featured images, but turn it on for content images, for example. And that will just make sure that your site loads a little bit faster without compromising the user experience. You can add async tags to your JavaScript files to improve your page download speed. Let's remove their parameters and also optimize WooCommerce scripts if you're using the WooCommerce plugin. Finally, we'd recommend using a caching plugin to increase your page download speed dramatically. We'd recommend either W3 Total Cache or WP Super Cache. You can install either of these just by clicking on the link here. I'll take you to the free plugins. You want to make sure you save your changes once you are done. And the next tab to have a look at is the styling options. With this tab, you can control the appearance of your theme, including colors, layouts, and patterns. The first thing to do is to choose the primary color scheme. We'll see here we have the green at the moment, but if we click on this color picker, you'll see we can customize this in order to choose any color we like. You can drag and drop in order to customize the color displaying as well as change the tint, access some defaults, or if you've got your own you want to add by hex code, you can just enter that in here. You can also reset to the default if you would like to. I might change this to um, a nice red here and perhaps just change the tint a little bit here. And if we save those changes and now we'll see my site, if we refresh here, we're gonna go from this nice green and we'll see that's done already. And that just shows you how quickly you can customize the steady income theme to match your brand. You can also choose the default sidebar position for your site. So that's either right sidebar or left aligned sidebar. You can override this on the individual posts in the post editor, but if you want to change this, it's just a case of clicking one button and then refreshing your site. And we'll see that change made immediately on our site, with the sidebar now moved over to the other side. You also have the option to customize the site background color. You can choose between a color, a pattern, or an image. So to set the color, I just need to pick up the color picker again and choose between any of these preset colors. 
I can also choose to have a background image with a pattern. We've got dozens of pre-selected patterns already here, as well as uploading images if you'd like. You can browse and then choose the background repeat attachment position and size, as well as choose there's a parallax effect, or you can choose a gradient and just select between two colors here. You can also choose the direction of the gradient if you'd like to. I'll just set this to a nice uh, subtle background color here. We'll just have a pattern there. Um, if I save those changes and refresh my site, we'll see those changes made immediately and we've got this nice subtle background pattern going on here now. You also have the option to add any custom CSS. You can add it into this box here and this will override any default CSS used on your site. If you're making complex customizations, you'll want to use a child theme and we'll cover those later on in this video. You can also choose to have a light box on. This, a light box is a stylized pop-up that allows visitors to view larger versions of images without leaving the current page. So if you click on an image, then it's going to expand on the current page. And it means users can view larger versions without leaving and that improves their user experience. You can turn that on or off here. Once you're done making your styling changes, you can save those and next we can have a look at the next tab, which is the header options. From here, you can control the elements of the header section on your site. That includes having a sticky header. This will keep the header visible even when you scroll down the page. So you'll see at the moment, if we scroll down the page, um, the header disappears. But if we have sticky header on, I'll save those changes once we've made those. If I just refresh my site here, you'll see as I scroll down the page, I'm going to have the header scroll with me. And that's a really nice way of making sure users can always access your navigation on your site. You can also choose whether to show or hide the primary navigation menu. So that's this one displaying up the top here, as well as the footer menu. You'll find the footer menu at the bottom of the page here, and you can turn that on or off. You also have the option to show or hide the logo if you want to have that off, as well as choose the header right-sided text that appears to the right side of breadcrumbs. So we'll see we have a uh, text here saying download my ebook and that displays um, on the right side here. We can also choose the uh, header button text. So we'll see it says start earning today and also we've got a link. So here we've got a link to mythemeshop.com but you can add any item you want here. And that might include a link to your ebook or your newsletter or other services you're offering with a steady income theme. I want to make sure you save those changes once you're finished. And next up, we can have a look at the homepage options. And from here, we can customize the elements of the homepage displaying. Now, in order to add the stylized homepage that you'll be familiar with with the demo on mythemeshop.com, before we add in any options here, we need to go to pages and then press add new. You want to add in a title here, which can just be homepage. You can leave the content blank. And then on the right hand side under template, you want to select homepage. You can publish this page. And then from settings and then reading, you can select um, under front page displays, you want to select a static page and then the home page you've just added. Save those changes. And that's now going to allow us to add in the custom content to the home page with that displaying. So we can now customize um, back on the theme options panel. And the first option to choose is whether you want the banner displaying on your home page. If you have this off, then that's going to disappear. But this is one of the main features of the steady income theme. So you probably want to have this on. You can choose a home page banner image and I'll just remove this in order to show you how to add these in here. As with the logo, you can press browse and then either add any images from the WordPress media library or press upload files and then select files in order to add files from your computer. I've got one prepared here, so I'll press open and then select image and WordPress is going to add that in to the theme. You can also add your homepage banner title so we can have start earning steady income today and also some banner description, which is just some text here. I'll save these changes so you can see right away what they look like on our site. You can see we've got the big banner here with that background we've just added. So we can also customize the rest of the banner. You can choose the banner text. So we've got get started here. You'll see that here. And we've also got the button background color by using this color picker here. Here we've got one matching the image, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. You can also select the button array image. You can see here we've got um, this one here, and that just adds in a little bit of urgency. Now when users click on the getting started button, they're going to be taken to this form that will allow you to collect their email address. You can customize what displays on this form. 
you can choose the image. So again, we've got the option to upload the image here. So I'll just show you how this works again. You'll be familiar with this uploading process by now. Just drop in the image you want to display here and then press select image in order to add that in. You have the option to turn on or off the free ribbon depending on whether it's appropriate for your service or product. Now, in order to customize the form itself, you want to just head over to Appearance and then Widgets. And from there, you'll find the widget area Home Subscribe Widget. There you want to drag and drop the WP Subscribe Widget or WP Subscribe Pro Widget. You'll find it just down here um, that we installed earlier. You can open this up and then you can then choose um, your email service. So you can choose between FeedBurner, MailChimp and Aweber and add in your API key and your list ID. If you click on each of these, you'll find details on how to find those from MailChimp. You can also choose whether to send a double opt-in notification and include the name field. And if you click on labels, and that's going to allow you to customize those as well. And you see, you can fully customize all of the text that displays there. Make sure you save those changes and that will allow you to collect email addresses and enhance your online business. Below that then, we've got the homepage social icon and book section. You can use this to turn on or off the social and book section. So we'll see if we turn that off, that's going to disappear. That's this section displaying here and you'll see we have the option to customize this, including the heading for the social icons. So we've got join over 100,000 people in our community. You can customize that text, including adding any tags such as the strong tags and also make that bold as we've got here. You can customize the homepage social media icons. You see we have these here, but you can drag and drop in order to move these around as well as expand to customize or delete as well as add in your own. So you can add any icons you want here. So we can add a title. You can select between all of these social media icons. So if we wanted to have Yahoo, for example, we could add in a title, a URL as well, and press OK once that's done. You can drag and drop in order to move these around or delete the ones you don't want. So we might move Twitter first um, and perhaps remove Google Plus as well. And I'll save those changes just to show you how quickly and easily you can customize the steady income theme. And you can see already we've got those removed from our site. You also have the option to customize the heading for book images. So here we have recommended readings by John Smith, and we've also got three book images added. As with the social icons, you've got the option to drag and drop in order to move these around as well as expand. You can add in an image and a book link if you'd like. And it's the same for all of these. You can add in any extra books you want to add here. Just add in an image and a link as well. I'll leave those as they are. You also have the option to customize the more books link and text. So that's this one here displaying here. And you can also choose whether to have post displaying as well on your homepage. So you can have those on or off and also choose the featured categories. You can click here in order to bring up all of your categories or just press select all in order to add all of the categories you've got on your site. I'll select all of them. And if I just refresh my site, you'll see I've got posts added in as well here. So those are all of the options for the homepage. Next then we've got the footer and from here you can control the elements of the footer section. Now the first thing you'll see is you have the option to enable or disable footer widgets. You can have these on or off as well as choose whether to have three or four widgets displaying. You see at the moment we've got four widget areas displaying, but you can choose to have three of those if you would like. You can also choose to set up the footer carousel. That's this section here, which displays some of the places that we have been featured in. For example, CNN, Fox, and so on. You see, we can scroll through these here. Now you can set what is displaying here by using these items here. If we expand one of these, I'll show you what these look like. You'll see, for example, for this one, we have um, CNN and we've just got this uploaded in here. You'll see if you add your own in, it's just got the standard browse button in order to add those in. We haven't got any links, so we've just got a hash in order to uh, make sure that these aren't clickable. But if you want to add in a URL, then you can do so here. As always, you can drag and drop in order to move these around and you can add as many or as few as you like. So if you want to delete any of those, you can just do that there. Finally, on the footer, you have the option to change the copyright text. You can change or remove the link to mythemeshop.com or use your own custom text. You can also use the affiliate link for mythemeshop.com to earn 70% of the value of the sales you refer. And if you follow this link, it will take you to the affiliate program there. That's well worth having in order to promote mythemeshop themes, but also make sure you get value from the customers that you refer. You want to make sure you save those changes once you are done. And the next option to have a look at is the blog options. 
From here, you can control how blog posts are displaying on archive pages on your site. You can choose whether to have the image on top and then the title and content, or to have the uh, title, image, content, or the image wrapped on the left-hand side with the title and content next to it. And you can just click through any of these in order to select them. So if we have um, the title on top there, I'll just save those changes. And if we load up an archive page on our site, we're going to see we've got the title at the top, the image, and then the content below. You can also choose that third option there if you'd like. You can also choose whether to have um, excerpts or full posts. So you'll see right now we've got um, a short excerpt from the post. If you wanted to display the whole thing, or at least up to the more tag, which you can set um, under each post when you're editing, um, you can choose each of those there. You can also choose the pagination type. So you'll see right now we have um, numbered pagination, which goes one, two, three. But we can also choose to have a default, which is next or previous, an AX load more button, or an AX infinite scroll. I'll show you what the AX buttons do here. If we change those and then refresh our site, we're going to see we've got a load more post button added. As we click this, it's going to load extra posts without leaving the current page. This is a great way of improving the user experience and making sure users can access your content without being inhibited by page loads, times, and so on. You can also set this to infinite scroll, and as you get to the bottom of each page, posts are going to automatically load. So it's a really nice way of improving the user experience. You can also customize the blog post meta information, so you have the option to display an author name, date, and comment count. And you can just drag and drop in order to enable or disable these, as well as reorder them. So if I wanted to just move the comment count around here, then I can make those changes just by dragging and dropping. If I refresh this page, we'll be able to see what that looks like. And we've got the comment count displaying here, and then the date with the author first. And that's exactly what we've selected. Make sure you save those changes once you're done. And next up, we can have a look at single posts. And from this option, we'll be able to control the appearance and functionality of your single posts. First thing you can do is control the layout. You can customize that here just by dragging and dropping. First, we have the post content. Then you have the option to display a subscribe form, related posts, author box, as well as tags. For the subscribe box and related posts, you can expand these in order to add in the details here. So for example, for the subscribe form, we're going to see um, if I just load up a post here, you'll see what that looks like. Um, we've got the content here, then we've got um, the subscribe form here. In order to customize that, we can choose between an email service and then add in the details appropriate for the email service we've selected. So for MailChimp, for example, um, you want to follow these instructions in order to find your API key, your list ID, and you've got a couple of extra options, including sending the double opt-in notification for new signups, the name field, and then you can customize the title, text, name placeholder, email placeholder, button text, success message, error message, for those already subscribed and also add in some footer tags. So you see those are really comprehensive options and you're going to find those displaying there. And that's how you can customize the subscribe form. For related posts, you can choose the taxonomy that's used to gather the related posts. So that's either categories or tags, as well as the number of related posts to display. So I'll just show you how this works. If we wanted to add in tags, um, perhaps between those two boxes, we could drag and drop there, save those changes, and now when we refresh the site, we're going to see we've got some tags added in here, and you can see those displaying there. You're also going to find you can drag and drop in order to customize the post meta information that displays, including author name, date, categories, and comment count. Other options for single posts include adding breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are a great way to make your site more user friendly. Um, these are the breadcrumbs that you'll see here. They just show all of the parent pages all the way up to the home page and provide a nice little sense of structure for your site. For the comments, you can choose to highlight comments made by the post author as well as choose whether to have the date. And you can just turn these on or off here. As always, make sure you save your changes once you've finished. And next up, we can have a look at the social buttons for the steady income theme. With here, you can enable or disable the social sharing button on single post using these buttons. The first thing to choose is whether to have these displaying on pages as well. So whether to have the social buttons on pages, you can choose to have that on or off. I'll leave that off for now. 
You can also choose the social sharing button's position. That can be either above content, below content, or floating next to the content. At the moment, mine's set to floating, but if I set this to above content and save those changes, then when I refresh this, you're going to see that the social buttons move from next to the content to above the content, and they're displaying there. You can also choose what social media buttons display. So you can choose between Twitter, Google+, Facebook Like, Facebook Share, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and StumbleUpon, and you can just drag and drop in order to enable or disable these, as well as move those around. Make sure you save those changes once you are done, and next up, we're gonna have a look at ad management for Steady Income. From here, you can control all of your options for displaying adverts in Steady Income, and you don't need any extra plugins. You have two ad management areas to choose from. You've got below your post title and below your post content. And for both of these, you can paste in your AdSense, buy sell ads or other ad code and into the relevant box and that's going to display in the relevant area. Now you also have the option to choose to display adverts after a certain number of days. So you can enter a number here, for example, seven, and that will display the advert below post title only after seven days after the post is published. Now you might want to use this in order to make sure that regular users don't see the adverts, but those perhaps coming from search engines are going to see those adverts and you can monetize those users. So you can enter the numbers here in order to access those. And it's the same for below post content as well. If you don't want to use that feature, you can just set it to naught in order to disable. You want to make sure you save those changes once you are done. And next up, we can have a look at the sidebars. And from here, you have the option to have full control over your sidebars. You can create unlimited custom sidebars and select one for displaying on each section of your site. And you can also set a custom sidebar on a per post basis in the post editor. Now for this section, as well as the navigation and typography, which we're going to look at next, we have full separate video tutorials available on mythemeshop.com. So if you need any extra detail, then head over to those in order to check those out. Now to add a custom sidebar is very simple. You want to press add sidebar and then add in a name. So here, for example, we'll add in one for search pages. So we'll go for search sidebar and I'll just add in an ID here, which can just be sidebar dash search. We want to press OK and then save those changes in order to put that into the database. Now you can select that sidebar and apply it to any page on your site. So you'll see by default these are all set to the defaults, but you have options to customize the blog page, single post, single page, archive, all the different types of archive, search, 404, and then options for the WooCommerce plugin as well. So if I wanted to apply my sidebar to search, then I can just select from this drop down, but choose between default and any custom sidebars I've created, such as this search sidebar. You can also choose to apply that to any other areas. So I could also apply it to the blog page, for example, as well as for single posts and pages, you have the option to set no sidebar by default as well. So I'll just leave that with the search selected and save those changes. Now, if I head over to Appearance and then Widgets, um, we'll have a full look at widgets later on, but I'll just show you this quickly. We have an extra sidebar area created here. We have an extra widget area, which is Search Sidebar. And just to show you how this works, I'll just quickly move the search bar um, from the default sidebar onto the search sidebar. So if I now just refresh this post here, we're going to see that um, the default sidebar loses the search bar here. And if I now do a search, um, then we're going to see when we hit return in order to load that up we've got um, the search sidebar displaying there and that's our custom sidebar and any other widgets I add in here are going to display only on that page. So that's a really powerful way and you can add as many custom sidebars as you like in order to fully customize these. It's worth spending some time with them in order to get the most out of your site and really make it your own. As always, want to make sure you save your changes once you are done. And next up, we can have a look at the navigation. So I'll take you a link to the WordPress menu editor where you can edit the menus with a drag and drop interface. First thing to do is to create a menu. I've already got one created here. We'll see it's my main menu. We now have my menu structure on the right hand side and options for the content to add on the left hand side. You can choose between all of your pages, posts, add any custom links, as well as your categories. So to add any of these, you just need to choose between most recent, view all or search, and you just need to tick the ones that you want and press add to menu. It's going to add it to the menu, and from there you can drag and drop 
in order to move the uh, way that they display, the order they're displayed in, as well as indent them in order to add in any sub menus that you want. And you'll see you can add in multiple sub menus as well. So if I wanted to have um, as a sub menu of featured a couple of menus here, perhaps we'll have uh, stories and then life as sub menus again, and we can drag and drop in order to do that. If I want to add any custom links, um, for example, to mythemeshop.com, um, then I can do so here as well. And you'll see I just press add to menu in order to do that. Once you've added an item to your menu, then you're going to have the option to expand it in order to customize the navigation label. So that's the text that displays, the title attribute, the CSS classes, which is optional, as well as optionally add an icon. And you can choose between any of these hundreds of web icons, and you can also search in order to find any others. You can also choose a color if you'd like to, and clicking this will just bring up the color picker that you'll be familiar with. Once you've made those changes, you'll want to press save in order to save them. And from there, you can apply the menu to a location on your site. To do that, you want to press manage locations. We'll see that the steady income theme supports three menu locations. We have the primary menu, the secondary menu, or the mobile menu. These are the first two. Um, we'll see currently I only have a primary menu, but if I wanted to apply the main menu as well to secondary or create a new menu, then I can click this link here. You can also choose which menu displays on mobile devices if you perhaps want to have a simplified menu there, but I'll just select my main menu to display. We'll save those changes once we're done, and um, if we now head up to our site, we're gonna see that we've got those menu items added in there, and we've got those sub menus we added as well. So that's how to set up your navigation using the WordPress menu editor. And as I mentioned, if you need any more detail, we've got a separate video tutorial on mythemeshop.com. Next up then, we can control the theme typography and the font displaying on your site. You can choose from 17 standard web safe font sets or from the 600 plus fonts in the Google Fonts Library. And you might want to follow this link in order to access the Google Font Library in order to choose the fonts that you're after because there are so many to choose from. You're gonna see that we've got um, options to control all of the different places where you've got fonts displaying on your site. So that's things such as your navigation, homepage article title, single article title, content font, sidebar font, and so on, all the way through to the bottom here. For each of these, you can control the font that's displaying, the font weight if it's available, the font size, the color, and if you click on more, you can also add CSS selectors, any additional CSS, and a fallback font. So the navigation font, for example, I could customize this by clicking here. In order to choose between any web safe font here, as well as if we scroll past those, we're going to access um, all of the Google font library. You can also just do a search. Um, so for example, if I wanted to do a search for a specific font here, I can load that up there. You'll see that loading that adds in a preview here so we can see what the font will look like. I can customize the font weight if I'd like, um, as well as the size, the color, loading up this color picker here. I'll just leave that as it is though. You can also choose the CSS selectors and customize these as well as any additional CSS. So we'll see this is transformed into uppercase. You can also add a fullback font in case the Google font library doesn't load. Um, so here I'll just add in Helvetica. And it's the same process for each of these you've got displaying here. If you're using a font with a dark background, then you can change these here to make sure that you can see the font. Save those changes, and um, if we have a look at our site now, see the menu font we've got here is gonna change to that open sans font that I selected there. And we can see that's just a subtle change there, which just nicely customizes the user experience. You can also, if you scroll down here, if you're using a language with non-Latin character sets, then for fonts where this is available, you can tick these in order to load the extra character sets required. It's just a case of ticking those and pressing save changes once you are done. So that's the typography options for the site. If you head over to import and export now, you'll remember we looked at importing the demo options earlier, but if you scroll past that, you're gonna see you have some extra options for importing and exporting your options content. If you expand this, you're going to see you have created um, your export options code. This text is your options code for your theme options panel, and you can use this to either copy it across to a new site or create a backup by copying it to a text file. If you are moving it to a new site, you can just press import code and then paste in that code in order to add those in. 
Below that, you also have the option to create a child theme using only one click. You can add in a name here, so I'll just go for steady income child theme, um, and then press create child theme. If you save those changes, the theme is automatically going to create all of the files you need for you. And if you then go to appearance and then themes, you can activate the new child theme and you can then make any complex changes you're making directly to the child theme in order to make sure that you aren't having any of those overwritten when you update the steady income theme. As always, save those changes once you are complete and that concludes our look through the theme options panel. I'll just show you some of the widgets available for steady income now. If you head over to appearance and then click on widgets, this loads up the WordPress widget area. Here you have the option on the left hand side to choose between the available widgets and on the right hand side, you can choose between the widget areas as well as any additional ones you've added from the theme options and any custom areas you've added as well. You can find the My Theme Shop specific widgets by the MTS prefix here. So for example, um, in order to add popular posts, I can drag and drop here in order to add that in. And that's how you move the widgets, just by dragging and dropping. You drag and drop into the area you want and you'll notice that dropping it opens up the widget. And here you can control some of the options. So for this widget, we can choose the title, the uh, day limit, or popular posts. Um, I'll just change this to a thousand to display all of our posts. You can choose the number of posts to display as well as the title length. And you can just change any of these just by entering the numbers here. You can choose whether to display post thumbnails for this one, as well as choose the post layout, either horizontal or vertical. Finally, you can also choose the post date, um, number of comments, and whether to choose an excerpt as well. I'll just turn off post date. And if we save those changes, now, if we um, just load up an article on our site, we'll see in our sidebar here, we've got those popular posts added here. You can also drag and drop in order to move widgets between widget areas. So for example, um, in order to move this to the footer, it's just a case of dragging and dropping and you'll find that saved automatically. So that's now moved onto the footer and we've got the popular post displaying here. So if I wanted to perhaps remove this about me section because we've added in an extra one here, it's just a case of selecting that and pressing delete. Widgets will save automatically um, when you move them, but you do need to press save in order to save those changes there for the options. You'll want to spend a bit of time getting used to the widgets here because there are so many available and they can really enhance your user experience. The final thing to show you then is you can also customize your widgets from the WordPress customizer. If you press manage in customizer, that's going to load up the WordPress customizer here. And this will allow you to use the widgets in a what you see is what you get area. So if I just load up a post here, um, we'll see that the widget areas that load here are the ones that display on the site. And we can just open these up and we can customize these and get a real time preview on what they're going to look like. You'll see you can add widgets as well as reorder um, in the standard way. And the menus are still the same. So you'll still have the same options available here, but just add a nice, um, what you see is what you get editor to those. Note that the uh, widget areas that display are only the ones that will display on the page you're previewing. So if you're not finding a widget area, um, then you'll want to go to a page that displays that specific area. Once you're done, press save and publish. And that concludes our look around the steady income theme. As I mentioned, it's a really powerful theme for online marketers, bloggers, and entrepreneurs. And it's perfect for bloggers who want to build their brand. If you do have any queries, then head over to community.mythemeshop.com and we'll be more than happy to help you. Otherwise, I hope this video has been helpful and thank you very much for watching.